So who are you? <laughs> I'm, uh, my name is Mikael uh, and I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Zendesk. Zendesk is a, a customer support solution uh, enabling companies to really reach out and interact with their customers uh, and kind of deal with customer engagement in the, in, you know, for this century we're in right now. Yeah. I, I wanted to come and meet with you guys because uh, Rackspace is using your, your service to yeah. help our customers and so thank you for that. Well, but our pleasure. One one thing we were talking before the cameras turned on, uh, you know, Rocky and I are getting around this industry and seeing all sorts of companies like yours that are helping companies interact with their customers in different and new ways. You know, we were just at Spigot on Friday, yeah, and they let you get ideas from customers. Are you noticing the same trend that companies now are being forced almost to interact and? deal with their companies in a new way most definitely and i think that's the that's the big story here that that traditionally customers or companies could you know they could have a customer service center and that you know customer service center then dealt with you know reactive customer support so if somebody contact them they could then you know deal with it somehow today i think that customer service is kind of a discipline for the entire organization. Everybody in the organization has to be able to reach out to customers one way or the other. And it's not a question about re being reactive anymore. It's more a question about being you know, proactive in your support because if you have an issue, you, know, you, know, you may not end up going to the company, but you know, going somewhere else. And then the, it's the responsibility of the company to reach out where you are and make sure that you, know, you get the good customer service uh, from them. Yeah. What, what is changing in terms of customer service? It, um, uh, uh, let, let's just start there. What's changing <laughs> about customers? Why did your company all of a sudden spring up? Why didn't some old company that dealt with call centers uh, yeah. morph into this new world? I think, you know, first of all, we had a clean slate. So a, a, a couple of us been working in a, a couple of years in the traditional customer support help desk space and we dealt with these big old clumsy systems for uh, providing support and it was like it was long long processes getting it implemented just getting the servers up on like a two month two month project not like with Rackspace um, <laughs> and then you know implementing it configuring it having like a million consultants working with it and then paying a gazillion dollars for ultimately maybe ending up with something that that's not very advanced in the end uh, and I think that that was initially, that was the primary train, trend that we wanted to kind of introduce, that uh, uh, customers of, customer service, customer support, could be a, like a, a service you subscribe to. Yeah. Having the infrastructure served to you as a service so you can get up instantly and running. Um, like I showed you before with our helpless system or with Zendesk, that you sign up for the service and you can start running. You can, you can hit the ground running with the system yeah. and be fully operational within you know, hours. And that's what we also hear from our customers. Like, uh, I talked to Sony Music the other day, and they were like, yeah, normally this was a big process as well, and blah, blah, blah. But here we were up and running within a few weeks. Just in the test period, everything was, you know, everything we just started using it for production before actually going into production. Yeah. And that's one of the, the key benefits of our system. So now you have this newfangled uh, service that you turn on and, and can provide service, but you still need to uh, supply some, things on your back end, right? Yeah, you, you still need to, you still need to have people there, you know, yeah. because people are ultimately the, the, the ones that are providing the support. So that's not part of the Sendesk offering. It's like you still need people, but we are coming with a tool that just makes their life so much easier. And yeah. that's why, you know, people love Sendesk because we really, you know, we make them shine, we make them do their best, we make them, we make what's going on transparent to everybody, so everybody feels a big responsibility for, go, for dealing with, you know, the, the, the customer request and ultimately dealing with the customers. Yeah. Because it's, it's extremely transparent for like the managers, for the executives, for your, you know, your coworkers and for the customer itself, what's actually going on. Yeah. The neat thing I, I, I liked about it is you have a dashboard of widgets that you can uh, hook Zendesk into your other enterprise systems. Like uh, you showed me one that hooks into Salesforce. Yeah. Right? Uh, but there's dozens of them that exactly. hook into Get Satisfaction, which is another company that's trying to do something innovative in this area. And 
and on and on. I mean, tell me a little bit about wh why you did that and what customers are doing with it. And so that's, that's really one of the things that we're really proud of is kind of the extensibility of the system. So we actually, we had the API, uh, APIs to the system up before we had the actual application, meaning that we've actually used our own APIs to build our application. Yeah. And everybody can come in and basically build their own customer support application on top of our API if they want to. Um, but that also means that we've taken some of these, uh, we've taken some of these paradigms that you know from other types of kind of web 2 oe applications, also ultimately also from the consumer space, and say you need to be able to extend kind of your, your send desk. So we have this widget uh, interface where you can add in widgets through a you know, point and click interface and have it integrated to your CRM system or your knowledge management system or whatever. So for example, with the Salesforce stuff that we're going to announce some new uh, uh, functionality around, you get a request in and you can automatically look up what's going on, what, what do you have on that requester, that service requester, that customer and your CRM system. Yeah. So before going into a support process, you can look out automa automatically what information do we have on that customer and just helps you kind of provide a better support. Uh, same way we know we, um, you can integrate this to your own uh, uh, legacy system. So if you have like a customer order system, a customer management system, you get a request and you can automatically see, well, this guy has three outstanding orders. Yeah. And that's, you know, so if he asks like an open-ended question, instead of going back to him and say, what is it actually you're talking about? You have a good idea that's probably one of these orders that he has outstanding right now. So that's just one of the things that makes this system very elegant and, you know, a joy to use. Yeah. Your company started in Denmark. Exactly. But you're here in San Francisco. Beautiful Copenhagen. <laughs> cold, cold Copenhagen. Yeah, we were three guys in an attic in Copenhagen. So it's, uh, it's one of those stories. And then first, uh, Charles River Ventures and Benchmark Capital got some interest in us. And so in September last year, we moved the company over here, got some uh, office space here on Townsend, and then started hiring people. So there's some very talented people here in the valley, so it's a, it's a, it's a great place to be. Yeah. You have uh, about 40 employees now? We have 40 people today, yeah. It's crazy. In two years? <laughs> yeah, but this is from September, so <laughs> this is like six months. Wow. Yeah. So the first, you know, the first couple of years, the first six months or the first 18 months, you know, it was the three of us plus a lot of people willing to help us. But, you know, employees started when we got over here. Yeah. Um, what's the challenge for your business? What, what are you seeing happen in the world that you didn't expect? I think that uh, we're kind of we're overwhelmed by the feedback we're getting from the market. So today we're like, we have thousands of customers. We get 20 new customers every day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so we're really seeing the start of a paradigm change here, where kind of we've, to a lot of companies, we simply democratize the concept of having a customer support help desk system, or as we like to phrase it, being able to engage with your customers, having a customer engagement platform, which, yeah. is, which is like the new theme. Um, and, uh, you know, and for a lot of other companies, we've just changed their ideas about what is a, what is a system like this? What, is a, what, what does it mean to provide customer support and reach out to customers for a system like this? And whereas it used to be the big, clunky, complicated, expensive process, we just made it very lean and very agile for them. Yeah. So really execute on this opportunity we have to change a world of customer engagement. It's kind of, it's, you know, it's, that's, that's, that's our agenda and that's what's interesting right now. What, what kind of mistakes do you see companies make when they set up customer service organizations or, or should they even think of having a customer service organization or should they be like Zappos and enable yep. every employee from the janitor to exactly. the CEO to do it? Right? I, think that's, I think that's what we're seeing with Zendesk that people are doing. Instead of coming in and you know, having you know, five agents or five support reps that have access to the system and can deal with customers, everyone in the organization gets access to the system and can see what's going on. So in my case, for example, I have an ISS feed on my iPhone that I can, so I can monitor all the conversations we have with our customers. It's just an easy, simple way of doing it, and I'm always on the top of what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and if there's something I want to dig into, I can just click on it and then assign it to me and, and deal with it before yeah. reassigning and it. And you can somebody. answer it right from your iPhone? Yeah, yeah, of course. Are you going to have an iPad app now too? Or? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, we talked about that. So we're going coming with a new iPhone app soon. Yeah. Uh, but the I iPad app will be a little later. 
That's for sitting on the couch and doing exactly, customer support, right? Exactly. <laughs> so we have, you know, I talked to the VP of, who was that? I can't even remember, but he told me that he set up their, help, their send desk from his couch with his two kids running around making noise. He set it up over the weekend, they start using it on Monday. So that's, that's kind of, that's, you know, that's our benchmark for providing kind of perfect usability and, you know, beautifully simple uh, systems. What, as an executive at a company that's using Zendesk, what, what kinds of reports or what kind of stats do you see? What, what, what kinds of things, well, you said you see an RSS feed of everything, but yeah. do you see other kinds of stats? Yeah, so well? the, <clears throat> you can integrate this with a variety of like messaging systems. So if you have want to have things pushed out on, on Twitter, or on Yammer, uh, or on your, like, your campfire chat message board, you can do that if you want to. And we'll provide a lot more functionality like this going forward. So you have this you know, constant, but it's not, I think it's not that much a question about a dashboard and a, and a gauge for you know, what is the move right now. It's more uh, an ability to quickly dive into a conversation. Right. I think that's, that's the important thing here. It, it's interesting. Today, I, I asked Google a question, um, like, how do I sync up my Google Calendar with my Outlook? Right? I didn't know how to do that. Yeah. And I got a message board that could have been built in, in Zendesk of customers asking the same question. Exactly. And it's out in the public web and part of part of the Google search engine yeah. now. Is that something that you guys think about? Like, how how do we make the customers part of this question Definitely. and answer? If I have a c customer who is having a problem with a TV or something. There's probably another customer who can answer that faster than I could. Definitely, definitely. And our, you know, our ambition is really to be like this tool, so you can have a one-on-one -on -one customer support conversation or a customer conversation, a one-to-many customer conversations. You can put your stuff out there in an easy way, and people can retrieve it themselves. And this many-to-many, -many, uh, you know, conversation. So you basically, uh, you you are an, an enabler of customer conversations between your customers. And so I think the challenge we have is quickly and easily navigate people from one type of conversation to another. Yeah. Do you find that customers are using video or audio at all uh, to explain their problem? So or we have a very good partnership with a company called Screen Steps that provide these kind of videos and they have a widget directly enabled in Sendesk. So if somebody gets a request in and they use the Screen Steps widget, they can, uh, they can look up intelligently from kind of the conversation, what kind of related videos do we have, and embed that directly into the conversation. Okay. So what about that. what about sending a video into the company and saying, "Hey, I, I have you know this software, and I don't can't figure out how to make it work, <laughs> you know, and here's what I'm trying to do, or it's giving me an error, and can I show you a video of what I'm actually seeing?" Yeah, exactly. The last part we're seeing, we don't see people taking videos of themselves and how they look, right. but we say, "Oh, this is what's happening on my screen right now. Do you understand this?" So uh, integration, we have a bunch of integration for these screen capturing tools yeah. that kind of scra grabs what's, you know, what you see on your screen right now, either as a still photo or in video, and then sends that along with the request to the, to the help desk. Very cool. Mm. I could imagine all sorts of, of things like, like that. You know, if I have a TV that's getting discolored, I'd love to take a, a picture or a video of that and send it in to Sony or whoever yeah. I bought my TV yeah. from and say, hey, what is this, you know? So we have this uh, drop. Dropbox functionality. We basically we enable everybody to embed kind of Dropbox wherever they are, and then directly from there being able to you know submit your questions or your requests or your reports directly through that interface. And we have the exact same interface for your mo mobile app. So if you're building a mobile app for iPhone or Android, you can embed like a Dropbox directly in your application. So if you have an error and say, oh, what's going on here? And, oh, how do I find out how to contact that company? You can just, you, know, you can, uh, they can build in a functionality to kind of press a button yeah. uh, and send all the relevant information to the providers of the, of the application there. So they got all the information about what, what version and all that stuff together with the, you know, the error report. That's awesome. It is. Awesome, awesome. What, uh, what other cool uh, widgets do you have? Cause I, I, I'm learning just by listening to you talk and all sorts of things developers can do to build in better support yeah. systems, right? You got so many sexy things uh, like um, like uh, the, the, the partnership we had with Get Satisfaction. So Get Satisfaction is this provider of customer communities out there. Yeah. And they really, um, so they have all these public conversations, but the instant somebody, you know, 
in the support community have a conversation that they say, oh, this is actually delicate, or we need to kind of exchange sensitive information. Instead of having it publicly, they can just pipe it into their sender's help desk and then deal with it like on a one-on-one -on -one basis in there, and then if relevant, push it back out. Interesting. Yeah. And we're going to have a lot with that, so every block common in the world should soon be able to be piped into a, a SendDesk help desk too. Very cool. It is. Are you doing anything with Google Voice? Because it, it seems like I could, if I was setting up a new startup, I wouldn't buy a, a, a phone system. I'd just buy everybody mobile phones. Yeah. And uh, Tom joined Google exactly. Voice so I can route the phone yep. the phone calls to you. Yeah. So Are uh, you thinking of that? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anything else we should know about your company <laughs> while we try to guess what, what you might be doing with Google Voice in the future? No. Right? Yeah. No. So basically, so the ambition of Sendisk is really to be able to support any kind of channel you can imagine. Okay. Anywhere you can interact with your customers, you can, you can have Sendisk reach out and help you uh, embed that conversation into your business processes. Uh, and we want us to be able to support any model. So if, if it's a one-on-one -on -one process, a one-to-many, a many-to-many -many process, we really want our companies to be able to embrace all of those. Very so, cool. Yep. Well, thanks for uh, showing me uh, Zendesk. Thank you. Thank you.